Hello everyone and welcome back to part 5 in this set of tutorials for our Dreamweaver class. Uh, I'm Tim Stack and glad you could join us again. Okay, so we're kind of right where we left off. We've just created um, our structure for our website, uh, how we want things to be laid out. So if you think of this structure of tables we've just built, um, think of it as kind of the 2x4s that are going to hold our content and they're invisible. We, we noticed that uh, when we previewed this in the browser it wasn't quite what we wanted. Um, we've got it built but those 2x4s are invisible so when my visitor comes and looks at this it's not visually obvious these different regions, what each region is. So uh, we need to beautify it a little bit and maybe not really, that's probably not the right term, we need to make it more visually obvious um, and by doing that I think it'll be easier for our visitor to use. Excuse me. Okay, so um, let's get back into it here. And all I'm going to do uh, to make these regions easier to identify is to use color. And more specifically, I'm going to use background color. Because all the regions we put in, one of their properties is they all allow us to put background color in. So let's do that first. Um, so each of these tables that I've put in, and actually each cell of each table, allows me to put a different background color in, in it, um, as well as the ability to put a background color uh, for the whole page. So I put in four tables. They're all sitting on this background, and that background by default is white, and all of the tables by default um, don't have any background color, so they're transparent, so I see right through them to that white background. So the first thing I want to do is set that background color for the whole page. And I could leave it white if I wanted to. I'm just going to put in a little subtle um, background color um, just to make it something else than this stark white. Okay, so the way I get to the background color of the whole page is if I look down on the property bar, I could see a button that says Page Properties. Okay, so click on that. Now this little dialog box that opens up has a lot of different things we can control here, but all I'm worried about right now is the background color. So if you see the fourth thing down on that list, background color with a little um, button, that's our color picker button or our um, palette button. So when I click on that, a palette opens up and I can choose a color from this palette. And for now, I'm just going to choose sort of a, a, a light gray color. Uh, and we can get fancier later if we want. If I'm curious to see what that looks like without committing to it, I can push apply down here in the lower right hand corner. It applies that color and it kind of looks like it made everything that background color, but in fact those other tables are just transparent. I'm just seeing through them. So I might look at that and say, okay, well a little bit drab, but for now it's okay. I can come back here anytime and change it. So I'm going to leave that gray because really I want this background color to be very subtle. I don't want it to be distracting. Um, Okay, so I've got that background color in. The next thing I want to do is this area, um, this content area here, that's the area that's probably going to be the most common place where there's text that my visitors have to read. And, um, you know, the, the experts will say that most of us like to read text on the computer when the text is dark and the background that it's sitting on is light. So to make that easy, I'm just going to make the background of that area white. So if I just click, all I have to do is click inside that cell. I can click anywhere. Once I've clicked inside of there, if I go down to the property bar, um, I can see here the lower half of this property bar is all the properties of the cell. If you sort of look across that section, you'll see um, one of these uh, areas that are la that's labeled BG, and there is a color picker again right there. So I can click on that and tell it I just want a white color in there. So now I've got white color in that cell, and that cell is on top of the page or on top of the background, so it's what it's now hiding, that gray color. And I'm just going to do that in these other cells here. Um, let's see my main menu up here, my navigation. I'm just going to click inside of there. As I go down to the property bar, I can see that background uh, color chip again, or button. And I'm going to click on that. Up opens my palette. Um, now, as I try to pick colors here, um, this set of colors that comes up is pretty limited. Maybe I want to pick a color that matches my banner. Maybe I've made the, the banner that I chose here is not too colorful, but maybe I want it to match the banner. So um, while I'm right at this spot, if you notice, the um, your cursor has turned into an eyedropper. 
and I can take that eyedropper off of um, off of that palette and move it up onto say my banner and I can sample a, a graphic right off the banner. Now I'm not sure if you can see that in this recording but just trust me that my my cursor is now up over the banner kind of in the area that would be kind of blue sky and I can see back down in my uh, palette the little sample color it shows me kind of in the upper left hand corner of that um, palette that's open it shows me what color I'm over and if I click it's going to sample that color and in this case use it as the background okay now that color that I picked is pretty subtle compared to the gray I'll pick a different one here just so you can see it showing up so if I pick blue that goes in there that wouldn't be a good choice because my links are kind of that color and it hides them um, I could go up and try to pick a, one of these colors off one of these buildings so maybe I can get this little sand color here maybe put that in and that'll be okay for now. Um, maybe I'll use that same color for the footer. So I click down here inside the footer, click on my background color button again, and instead of me trying to go pick that same color off of the building, I can just pick it right out of um, my navigation cell. So I'm going to click on that to get that down for the footer. Uh, and then I have one more cell over here on the left to put some color in. So click inside the cell, go to background color, come up and I'll can maybe I'll try to sample some of these red bricks put those down that left hand side that's a little bit of a dark color might make my page heavy to the left um, but we'll worry about that later so with that much I'm just going to save those changes now preview it in the browser and with just that little amount of work um, my five regions now should be a lot more obvious Okay. When I just glance, I've just put background color in, and I could spend time now picking the perfect colors and working on a color scheme to make this look nice, but at this point I'm not too worried about that. I just want to make those five regions a little more obvious. Okay, let me close that window. Um, the other thing I'd like to do now is kind of as I'm working, I would like this to look a little bit more uh, like what it might look like when I actually have content in here so I can really see um, if I like it or not um, my colors and my layout all together so here inside this content area I'd like to bring in some more text now if I was a fast typer I could just type a couple paragraphs up um, but instead of that I'm just gonna bring in some text from a word document and this is kind of a valuable thing as well maybe you've been working on your welcome message or your content or your news items and you like to type that up in a word processor because it checks your grammar, check, does a good job checking your spelling. So I might have typed this up in a Word document. Now I could go open up Word, highlight the text, copy it, come back here, click inside the cell, paste it in and that would work just fine. Um, but that's kind of a lot of steps. Instead, I can actually just bring the import the content straight into here out of a Word document without even opening up Word. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go to the File menu, um, go all the way down to Import, and you can see the different kinds of stuff I can import straight into here. I'm going to import this out of a Word document. I then need to tell Dreamweaver well, which Word document, and I'll just grab this one here, which I'm not really sure what that is, but we'll just pretend that's my welcome message. And I click OK, and in it comes, takes it just a sec, and it pulled out. Wow, it pulled out a lot of stuff. So you can see it put a bunch of paragraphs in there. Um, I don't quite need that much, so I'm just going to highlight a bunch of this stuff, a bunch of this text here and press delete on my keyboard takes that away and when I kind of scroll back up to the top here you can see I just got a couple of paragraphs and that will be just fine there's a bulleted list there kind of would like to take that out okay so I've got a couple of paragraphs of text here that'll be okay to test now kind of an interesting thing happened um, look over on that left hand column you may have noticed that the text I put over there seems to have drifted down in that column uh, these two columns, they're part of the same row in this table, and when I put all those uh, paragraphs into the right-hand column, the whole row stretched to fit that. So that left-hand column, it also stretched. Uh, and my content, the stuff that I had in there, that little bit of text, drifted down. And the reason for that is, is that the default vertical alignment inside of these cells is to the middle. So stuff automatically will drift down to the middle. So I need to change that. So I'm just going to click inside that cell, 
go back down to the property bar and earlier we changed the horizontal alignment in our navigation and this time I want to change the vertical alignment from default to top and that will ensure that no matter how long this um, row gets, how much it stretches, that my content in that left hand side always stays sort of fixed up to the top. Okay, so let's preview it again. I'm just going to save that. So I did Control S to save it. I'm going to preview it in the browser quick so I can see what it looks like.